Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Prime Minister Modi, distinguished foreign ministers and other ministers, heads of delegations, ladies and gentlemen. Art of Asia is meeting at a time of great opportunity and significant threats for Afghanistan, with Asia-wide and global implications. Taking stock of the emerging patterns and trends of the year since our meeting in Islamabad last year will help us pre prepare for 2017 and beyond. But let me first begin by thanking you and the Indian people for hosting us today in the historic and beautiful city of Amritsar, a city that used to be the center of bills of exchange in commerce connecting India to Central Asia, Russia, and be Middle East and beyond. And thank you for the visit to the Golden Temple. It was an exceptionally moving event. Mr. Prime Minister, you honored us by visiting Afghanistan twice this year to inaugurate two important iconic projects. The Afghan Parliament will stand as an enduring testament of the enduring relationship between the world's largest democracy and a people in government committed to the realization of democratic rights and obligations of a free citizenry enshrined in our constitution. The Afghan India Friendship Dam at Salma, generating 42 megawatts of power and storing 650 million cubic meters of water and finished after 40 years of waiting will bring light and improved lives to the people of Herat. No wonder that your visit was greeted with spontaneous celebrations across Afghanistan. Equally significant, the trilateral agreement signed in Tehran between India, Iran, and Afghanistan on the port of Chabahar is a major step in transforming Afghanistan from a landlocked country to a land bridge. Your words, assuring the Afghan people of the support of 1.25 billion strong Indian people have been quickly matched by deeds, as demonstrated by your pledge of $1 billion of new development assistance. As we have welcomed nearly a million of our refugees, the new portfolio of programs and projects made possible by your assistance will reproduce, expand, and consolidate the billions of historic bonds between the two nations dedicated to empowerment of their people in peace and prosperity to cooperation. The agreed cargo air corridor to be soon launched will give Indian and Afghan consumers and producers unimpeded access to each other's products and services. Afghan students, over 20,000 of whom are currently enrolled in India, are marked for playing a significant role in leading and managing Afghanistan's transition to prosperity and stability. India's support is impressive both in its scale and its system of delivery. India's assistance is state-to-state -state aimed at improving people's lives and well-being. It is transparent and without strings attached. There are no hidden agreements in secret conditions. It is convergence of interests and values of two states inspired by the belief in cooperative advantage. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the renewal of international commitment to the people of Afghanistan during 2016 has been impressive. President Obama's historic decision in committing U.S. forces will be respected and remembered by us as a decision for securing our future. We thank the President and his national security team for respecting the sacrifice of our defense and security forces and for trusting our resolve to fight corruption and putting our house in order. 
commitment of $15 billion to, to fund the 354,000 strong ANDSF, the renewal of the resolute support mission and commitments by the assembled countries to have their sons and daughters serve in the resolute support mission during the NATO summit in Warsaw provided us with a medium-term horizon to strengthen the capacity and capability of our forces. We thank President Obama, Chancellor Merkel, Prime Minister Cameron and Renzi, President Erdogan and other leaders for forging the summit's consensus on Afghanistan. The $15.2 billion commitment at Brussels in support of our peace and development framework was even more impressive, for it took place against the backdrop of arguments regarding aid fatigue and competing global priorities. Our intense focus on reforms and our productive dialogues with our development partners, however, resulted in a resounding success. We take the pledges, as I said at the concluding press conference, as a line of credit to be translated into commitments and disbursements against substantial and sequential reforms. We thank all of you for your participation and pledges, particularly the effort by Vice President Mogriani and her staff at the European Union and U.S.'s advocacy efforts on our behalf. Believing that deepening and broadening of partnership requires constant work and investment in relation building, we neither took the Warsaw nor the, Bla the Brussels pledges for granted. Instead, we focused on making our case by deeds in the arenas of the battlefield and in the reform of governance, ranging from revenue collection to the overhauling of rule of law institutions. We thank you for the opportunity for engagement and your appreciation of the complexity of the challenges facing us. With the medium-term horizon made possible by Warsaw and Brussels, we are now embarking on an earnest effort to ensure the stability and security of our country and the well-being of our people.